It's getting to be that time of the year in Michigan where we let go of the warmer temperatures as we approach winter. And when people ask us, what do you think about the winter in Michigan? We always tell them the same thing. We love the weather in Michigan. We prefer to have the seasons. But what we really mean is, it's cold as hell here. Somebody get us out of this place. Michigan has four seasons, cold, colder, coldest, and hot. And since it's cold most of the time, we do what everybody else does that's in a very stressful situation, and we eat our feelings. So I am stocking the studio with Better Made Chips and Fago Pop, as you can see right here. Better Made Chips and Fago Pop are staples of Michigan. But Michigan now has yet another staple, and that is the reason we have our own Linux company. Can you believe that? Take that, Ohio. The reason is an awesome company that's recently moved into the area from California, which means they've traded this for this. Now they've recently sent me a laptop for review, which I am very excited to check out. In fact, I have it right here. I present to you the Varix 9100, which is going to be reviewed in this video. So I am very happy to have the reason in Michigan. In fact, they are actually, believe it or not, in my hometown, less than a few blocks from where I grew up. Can you believe that? So welcome the reason to Lapeer, Michigan. We may not have a football team that can win a single game, but we do have a Linux company and that's pretty cool. So full disclaimer, Every opinion in this video is mine. This is not a sponsored video. I actually reached out to the reason myself and asked them to send me something, and well, they did. So let's go ahead and check out the Varix 9100. So here's the Varix 9100 in all its glory. The chassis is surprisingly thin for a 17.3 inch laptop and it feels very sturdy with minimal flex. The display is a 1080p IPS panel with a refresh rate of 144 Hz. It's very smooth and it looks great. The brightness is about, I would say, a 9 out of 10. I've seen brighter displays but it doesn't really need to be brighter than it is in my opinion, it's totally fine. It's also a good display for playing games. I was able to check out a few of my favorites on this machine and they looked great. More on that later. Now some people may prefer a 4K panel and a laptop at this price point, but in my opinion it really doesn't matter unless you're doing design work. In my personal opinion I don't really understand the fixation with 4K panels and laptops anyway. Reason being higher resolution displays seem to lower the performance of games and it's a challenge to scale applications correctly on high DPI displays. In my experience, it seems that no operating system seems to handle 4K displays well in a laptop chassis. And we Linux people, we have the best support for virtual workspaces of any operating system, so we can definitely make extremely good use of a 1080p panel. And this particular panel is very pleasant to look at and the colors look great. The touchpad is pretty good too. It has two physical buttons and even a fingerprint reader. The touchpad feels smooth, and the buttons are satisfying to press. At the risk of sounding old school, I actually prefer physical buttons on a touchpad. Unfortunately, the fingerprint reader isn't actually working at the moment. My understanding is that Canonical will be making an update available for Ubuntu at some point in the near future that will enable support for additional fingerprint reader hardware, and as soon as that is released, the fingerprint reader should work on this model from that point forward. When it comes to the keyboard on this model, I like it a lot. The keyboard is very important to me because I do a lot of typing. It's more than just running Linux commands and writing scripts. I also write books as well. In fact, my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server 3rd Edition, is due out very soon, so make sure you pre-order your copy. But anyway, I can put a keyboard through some abuse, and this keyboard seems to be the exact same model of keyboard as my System76 Oryx Pro, and I've been typing on that keyboard quite a bit, so I already know that I love this one quite a bit as well. 
It could be the case that System76 as well as Zarezin source their keyboards from the same vendor, but either way, I like it a lot. Now I have noticed that there's a tuck sticker covering the Windows logo on the keyboard, which isn't a problem, but a customized laser printed key would have been even better. But overall, the keyboard is fantastic and I really enjoy typing on it. The Varix 9100 has all the ports that you could possibly want on a laptop. On the left hand side, we have two audio jacks, one for input and output. We have a USB 3.0 port. And there's also a micro SD card slot as well. I'm glad that the audio jacks are separate on this model. That always seems to work better in my opinion. No operating system seems to get that right 100% of the time. I'm also very pleased to see that there's an SD card reader because I am writing SD cards all the time for my Raspberry Pis. I'm always trying out different operating systems or different versions of RetroPie and whatnot, so I think that's going to work especially well for me. On the right hand side, we have two more USB ports and also a physical Ethernet port as well. And I'm really glad to see that because contrary to what a lot of manufacturers might think, Ethernet cables still exist and administrators still need them to manage network gear for themselves and possibly for clients. We have some more ports on the back of the laptop as well. We have USB-C, mini display port, as well as HDMI. Altogether, this laptop can support up to four displays between the internal panel, the two video ports, as well as the fact that the USB-C port carries Thunderbolt. All in all, it seems to have all the ports that I would ever need. When it comes to performance, this machine is fast and responsive. And it would be a great fit for anyone that needs to do some CPU intensive work or even gaming. You can order it with up to 64 gigabytes of RAM and the CPU itself has a base clock of 2.3 gigahertz and can turbo up to 5.1 gigahertz. The CPU in this model has eight cores and supports hyperthreading for a total of 16 threads. Gaming performance is really good on this laptop as well. I was able to try several games on this laptop, including Doom Eternal. That game was able to keep a frame rate of over 100 frames per second most of the time. And when I tried Doom Eternal on an external 4K capture card, the frame rate was relatively consistent at 30 frames per second. But honestly, that's probably a limitation of the capture card itself. So with a true 4K display, I bet you can get a frame rate even higher than that. So it's possible that the performance of Doom Eternal will get even greater with time, but I would say over 100 frames per second on 1080p is pretty decent for Doom Eternal. I also noticed that Minecraft was installed by default as well, at least on this review unit. Now Minecraft is probably not standard when you order this laptop, but I would guess it was installed as a test by another reviewer or maybe an employee of Zareason. But since it was installed, I figured, why not? So I logged in with my Mojang account and I played some Minecraft. It ran very smooth on both the native 1080p display as well as the external 4K capture card. But keep in mind that it's possible you may notice some lag in the video, I'm not sure, but I'm having some problems with my capture card that have nothing to do with this particular laptop. But best of all, this laptop runs Final Fantasy VI, and let's be honest, if a laptop is able to run Final Fantasy VI, there's really no reason to play anything else. Final Fantasy VI is perfection to the point where it's of major cultural significance for the entire human species. So, if it wasn't able to run Final Fantasy VI, I wouldn't even be able to take this laptop seriously. Now, a question that comes up quite a bit when I review a laptop is whether or not the fan is loud, and on this model, I find it totally acceptable. My Oryx Pro from System76, which is a similar model but smaller, the fan on that one is much louder than on this. In fact, I have three laptops with NVIDIA GPUs. This one also has an NVIDIA GPU, and this is the quietest of all of them. That's not to say that it's completely silent either, you will hear the fan from time to time, but it's very reasonable. And when I'm playing Doom Eternal on this laptop, the fan is quieter when running at full speed than it is on my Oryx Pro, my Gazelle, or even my ThinkPad X1 Extreme, which actually has the most annoying fan of them all. Overall, the fan is totally fine. I feel that when I'm really pushing this laptop, I won't be annoyed by the fan. I almost never hear it other than the times I've had to pay attention to it for the purposes of testing. When it comes to battery life, this machine has an integrated 73 watt hour battery that provides a bit over 3 hours of life in my test. 
And you could probably stretch the battery life even longer if you turn down the brightness and disable some of the things that you're not using. I think the battery life is reasonable. This model isn't for those of you that are looking for a long-lasting ultra-portable laptop. This machine is for those of you that play games or want to get CPU-intensive work done. They do have another model on their site for those of you that do want a machine that's a little bit more portable and lasts a bit longer. And the reason, if you guys are watching, since you have that other model listed on your site, how about you send it over? You do have my address. Now when it comes to audio quality, I think it's perfectly acceptable when watching YouTube videos or possibly binging Netflix. Maybe you want to check out that series Ratchet that everybody's talking about. I think that overall the audio quality is fine for spoken dialogue, such as in YouTube videos or TV shows. But when it comes to gaming, the quality is a bit of a letdown to me. There's just not enough bass and too much treble, but the audio does go very loud, which is pretty cool, so you definitely won't have any trouble hearing it. On my end, I'm almost always using either a headset or external speakers, so the audio quality doesn't really matter to me. Now when it comes to price, this particular model starts at $1649 in US dollars, and the base model is actually pretty good with 8 gigs of RAM, an NVIDIA RTX 2060 GPU with 6 gigs of video RAM, a 250 gigabyte M2 SSD, and no matter which configuration you go with, the CPU is always the Intel Core i7-10875H, which has 8 cores and 16 threads. And the GPU can be cranked up all the way to an RTX 2080. The review unit that they sent over to me shipped with an RTX 2070, 8 gigs of RAM, and a 500 gigabyte Samsung 970 EVO Plus SSD. The total cost for the configuration that I was sent would have set me back $1,927. One of the things that I love about Zerizen, other than the fact that they're in my hometown and they're an awesome company, you actually get a choice of the Linux distribution that they will install on your machine. They have a handful of distributions on their site to choose from, and there's even a place where you can write your own if you prefer one that isn't even on the list. If I was to purchase one for myself, I think I'd find it extremely hard to resist the urge to write in Hannah Montana Linux to see if they'll do it, but it's really cool that they give you a wide choice of which distribution to have on your new machine. The model that was shipped to me shipped with Ubuntu 20.04, which is good enough. Debian 10 is also an option, but I'd be curious how they make that work since most of the hardware in this laptop is actually newer than Debian 10 itself, and Debian Stable seems to have a really hard time with new hardware. Overall, I really do like this laptop, and I'm a bit surprised by that because normally I don't like 17-inch laptops. I usually prefer my machines to be 15 inches and smaller, but this one doesn't even feel like a 17-inch laptop even though it is. The performance is great. I love the screen. It's got a great keyboard. Games run very, very well. The fan isn't loud. It doesn't even get as hot as my other NVIDIA laptops, which is actually surprising to me because on those machines, the keyboard will get a bit warm and become uncomfortable to type on, but I haven't had that problem on this machine. The only thing that I might complain about is the audio quality, but then again, I have that complaint on every single laptop I ever review, so maybe I need to adjust my expectations for the sound quality on a laptop. And again, if you are just listening to spoken dialogue, there's no problem whatsoever. It's actually fine. But, you know, again, I use an external headset anyway, so I don't really think that's a big problem. But I'm going to be really sad to see this laptop go back to the reason. Again, it is a review unit. I didn't get to keep it because, well, I didn't buy it. But I definitely would buy this machine if I was looking for another laptop. I have um, several laptops already, and I probably shouldn't buy another one as tempted as I might be. But what's your opinion of the Varix 9100? Let me know in the comments down below and make sure you click that like button. That lets YouTube know that you want to see more Linux hardware reviews just like this one. But anyway, I will see you soon. I have some awesome videos coming up and I will see you as soon as I have my next video uploaded. And make sure you subscribe so you'll be the first to see that when it's out. And I'll see you again real soon. Thanks for watching.